place as a, as a tinderbox. One spark, the whole thing can go up in flames. The next war for Israel may not be fought with guns or tanks, but in boardrooms thousands of miles away. They're trying to legally destroy us. The Jewish state is under attack from all sides, and Jerusalem is in the crosshairs. Here we are facing this threat. Hear more about this sign of the times on today's 700 Club. Signs of the times, when will it all end? We're going to be talking to you about important things. I'm going to be teaching on prophecy, especially things that you've heard a lot about, rapture, tribulation, so forth. What about it? What does the Bible say? But as I have said before, I say again, God's time clock is the nation of Israel. So we're talking about Israel today as well and its role in the end of the age, as our series on the signs of the times continues. Well, as Pat mentioned, we'll talk about things that I know many of you have questions about, like the tribulation, the rapture, just in general, the second coming of Christ. You'd like to submit your questions for Pat to answer? You can do that by logging into our chat room. That's CBN.com. We'd like to hear them. And I'm going to probably make a lot of people mad today. <laughs> I know where you're going with that. You know, <laughs> well, I don't mean to do it, but I just, I just want to tell you what the Bible says. And I, if you disagree, I mean, blame Jesus. But first in the news, Hurricane Irene is expected to become a Category 4 storm before this day is over. Irene is roaring toward North Carolina, which is now under a hurricane watch. Ephraim Graham has this story. Hurricane Irene is coming, and it's shaping up to be an historic storm. Initial reports out of the Bahamas are of devastation. The head of the island chain's emergency management agency says at least two villages are 90% destroyed. Now, as Irene heads toward the U.S., it is only expected to become more dangerous as it picks up speed. People need to pay attention and go ahead and make sure they're ready from the mid-Atlantic all the way through the uh, northeast and New England states. Forecasters expect the system to make landfall as a Category 3 hurricane in North Carolina as early as Saturday. There's a mandatory evacuation order for Ocracoke Island, but some are choosing to stay, ignoring the orders. They say they know the risks. I think it's important to recognize that if you choose to stay, as we're almost certain to do, that you can't then expect emergency services to come to your aid. You're making a voluntary decision to put yourself in, in a more risky situation than otherwise. Residents all the way up to New England are preparing for Irene. The system's current path would take it all the way up the East Coast, affecting more than 65 million people. Officials in Massachusetts are encouraging residents along the coast to begin preparing. Some people can start boarding up their house. What we'd suggest is people that are vulnerable stop making a plan now. If Irene comes ashore in New England, it could be the biggest storm to make landfall there since 1991. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. These things are horrible, and I want to tell you, take preparations and don't be a hero. You can't fight against the storm that might come upon you. The uh, storm surge is horrible. Uh, those stir surges can get up 20, 30 feet. I, I was out in the Mississippi coast after uh, Katrina, and it was one of the most awe-inspiring things. There was no sound. There was no yeah. bird. Nothing. It was all gone. Everything was gone. And it was so quiet, just the wind whistling, because it had wiped everything out, that horrible storm. So please be prepared. And if there's any possibility of getting out, get out now. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories in the CBN newsroom. Lee. Pat, the deficit for the latest fiscal year came in just under $1.3 trillion, only slightly under the record high. But the latest government report also forecasts deficit spending to add $8.5 trillion to the national debt over the next decade. The national debt currently stands at more than $14.6 trillion. The report also says the economy will remain weak into next year and unemployment will still be above 8% in 2013. Many analysts are now wondering if the East Coast is prepared for a major earthquake. Tuesday's 5.8 magnitude quake led to inspections of bridges, nuclear power plants, and other structures from Georgia all the way up to Canada. 
A crack just over four feet wide was found in the Washington Monument. It's now closed indefinitely. Many experts believe the East Coast is due for a, quote, big one. There are major fault lines running from Canada to South Carolina, and geologists say that the ground in the eastern U.S. transmits shockwaves better than in the West. Many large, older buildings cannot handle a serious tremor, Pat. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't want to get weird on this, so please take it for what it's worth. But it seems to me the Washington Monument is a symbol of America's power. It has been the symbol of our great nation. We look at that monument and we say this is one nation under God. Now there's a crack in it. There's a crack in it and it's closed up. Is that a sign from the Lord? Is that something that has significance or is it just a result of an, of an earthquake? You, you judge, but I just want to bring that to your attention. That it seems to me symbolic. You know, when Jesus was crucified and when he died, the curtain in the temple was rent from top to bottom. I mean, it was just kind of, and there was a tear, and it was extremely symbolic. Is this a, is symbolic? Uh, you judge. Lee? Religious leaders are calling on New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg to allow them to help commemorate 9-11. The Wall Street Journal reports Bloomberg has excluded spiritual leaders from the upcoming 10th anniversary memorial service. One city council member says he's shocked by that decision. He points out that many turned to spiritual leaders for guidance after the tragedy. A spokesperson for the mayor's office says they want to, the day to focus on the families who lost loved ones in the terrorist attacks. Palestinians are pushing for the United Nations to recognize a Palestinian state next month, and some U.S. leaders aren't happy about it. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor is holding a, heading up a congressional delegation visiting Israel right now. He told CBN News that the Palestinian Authority could lose U.S. taxpayer aid because of their efforts. A move to seek a declaration of an independent state in a unilateral way is unacceptable. Uh, the U.S. House of Representatives has spoken out on that issue. Uh, we do not support uh, a extension of taxpayer aid if that is to take place. Since 2008, U.S. taxpayers have given the Palestinian Authority at least $300 million in direct aid each year, Pat. Well, we were given by Yasser Arafat, who was fattening his own pockets with some of our money. There was a terrific amount of corruption in the Palestinian Authority, and we were paying the bills. Uh, Eric Cantor is, is doing a superb job. He's a Virginia congressman. His district up in the Richmond, Virginia area. He's doing a superb job, and I'm, I'm very proud of his service. And, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, if there is a divided Palestine and an independent Palestinian state with all the authority thereof to import uh, weapons, to maintain armed forces, to do all that kind of thing, uh, it would be a death blow to the nation of Israel. So just keep in mind, this is, this is one more attempt by the nations of the earth to surround Israel and to destroy it. And I don't like that. I am a friend of Israel. Lee? Broadcaster Glenn Beck held his Restoring Courage event in Jerusalem Wednesday, and he announced plans for a global movement to defend Israel. Chris Mitchell has that story now from Jerusalem. Nearly 2,000 supporters gathered under the shadow of Jerusalem's Temple Mount to attend Glenn Beck's Restoring Courage rally. While his rally drew criticism from some, other Israelis supported the event, especially in light of the immediate dangers facing Israel. We see how many enemies Israel has. In this coming September, there will be a vote in the UN against Israel for a creation of a Palestinian state. And for that matter, what we are doing here, we think we will not abandon the Jewish people. I've been uh, advancing the cause of Christian-Jewish relationship for 30 years, but it's good to see other voices pick up the message and spread it to the nations of the world. Beck warned of dangerous times ahead. Threats are mounting, and evil is growing. Darkness is falling. He said Israel and Israelis exemplify courage, but he said in light of nearly universal and constant condemnation, Israel should not lose heart. My friends, do not lose hope. You must not lose confidence in yourself. You must have courage. You must draw courage from the knowledge, from the
from the knowledge that you were led to this land by God. Beck criticized the United Nations and international human rights groups that routinely condemn Israel and announced plans to begin a global movement to defend the Jewish state. And I will ask them to join me in standing in defense of Israel, the Jewish people, responsibility, and the truth. Beck will address other rallies in South Africa, South America, and then Texas on Sunday about this new initiative. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Pat, back to you. Thank you very much. Well, we're going to be talking about the prophetic significance, what the Bible says about what's going to happen in the last days, but uh, we have a story right now that Terry will tell you about. Well, coming up, Israel is under attack from all sides. The place is a, is a tinderbox. One spark, the whole thing can go up in flames. Uh, one thing we know prophetically is that Ezekiel 38 and 39, the, the war of Gog and Magog, comes after a period of security for the Israeli people and prosperity. How the state of Israel is another sign of the times after this. Questions? If you'd like to be a part of that, just log on to CBN.com. If you have diabetes and love food, pay attention to this free offer. Hi, I'm Nicole Johnson. I've had diabetes for years and I love food. To me, there's nothing tastier than rich chocolate cake, except maybe crispy oven fried chicken or cheesy potato skins. Mmm. Get these recipes and many more free in these amazing diabetes cookbooks. If you have diabetes and are on Medicare, you qualify for these five free cookbooks. Call 1-800-951-8092. Enjoy dozens of yummy recipes for desserts, main dishes, snacks, and more. Plus, get this free guide to planning delicious diabetes-friendly meals. So call now and get cooking. For your five free cookbooks and free meal planning guide, call 1-800-951-8092. That's 1-800-951-8092. Tomorrow. We conclude the Signs of the Time series with a look at the Antichrist. There is such a thing as evil, in my judgment, and this man is evil. Plus, believers were killed for this. From ancient Pergamum to modern Germany, the seat of Satan redesigned by the Nazis. Satan felt at home there. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Israel is gearing up for possible massive Palestinian protests next month. That's when the United Nations may move forward with the recognition of a Palestinian state. As Chris Mitchell reports, that threat is just one of many facing the Jewish nation. Israel is heading for rough times in the months ahead, faced with a number of challenges. The most immediate one is the uh, decision of the um, Palestinian Authority to uh, reject negotiations with Israel. Palestinians want the United Nations to accept them as a member state in September. Israel's former UN ambassador, Dory Gold, says Palestinians want to use mass demonstrations in the West Bank to challenge Israel. There's a strategy in the field to create an atmosphere of violence that um, leads uh, TV networks to give it special coverage and forces public opinion as well as Western governments to shift their position from one of questions about what the Palestinians are doing to strong support for what they're trying to accomplish. Israeli Messianic leader Chuck Cohen says any such action would be dividing God's land to make an Islamic state in the territory promised to the Jewish people. The Palestinians never had it in the first place. And yet here we are facing this threat. And they want to divide Jerusalem. God is saying, I'm testing your hearts with Jerusalem that I'm giving back to my people. If Israel defies the UN, author Joel Rosenberg says the international community could team up to cut off Israel diplomatically and even economically. Think of what we did with Iraq, for example. We built a coalition to cut her off economically, and then eventually we sent 
a military to overthrow the regime. And what if Israel agrees to divide its land with the Palestinians? That will go badly for Israel, uh, as it did the last time they divided the land, giving Gaza away. They ended up getting more than 8,000 rockets and missiles, not peace. When they divided the land and uh, gave back a sliver of the north to Lebanon, they ended up with 4,000 rockets and missiles as thank you presents uh, from the Lebanese. Cohen says Palestinians have other tools at their disposal. So the latest thing they're trying is what's called lawfare instead of warfare, lawfare. They're trying to legally destroy us. Lawfare means exploiting courts in democratic countries to harass Israelis, accusing them of war crimes and crimes against humanity. It's part of a campaign to delegitimize the Jewish state that ranges from accusing Israel of being an apartheid state to rewriting history that denies any Jewish connection to Jerusalem or the Temple Mount. Then there is the direct threat to the land and all its people. Iran hasn't gone away. Anyone who reads the reports of the International Atomic Energy Agency is aware that the amount of um, low enriched uranium, which can later be converted to weapons grade, uh, is still growing. Iran clearly is working on nuclear weapons. Uh, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is even starting to speculate publicly over whether they should just come out and say they're going to build nuclear weapons. And Iran's allies already threaten Israel. To the north, Hezbollah has some 50,000 rockets and missiles pointed its way. Syria could move from cracking down on its own pro-democracy demonstrators to picking a fight with Israel. To the south, Hamas rules Gaza, and the Muslim Brotherhood may soon rule Egypt, Israel's first Arab peace partner. And don't forget Turkey, a one-time ally that's shifting allegiances. With all the threats, Israel is a very strong country. It's a country which has uh, economically been stable. It's a country where there's a huge amount of creativity. As much as it faces these difficult challenges, it will learn to live with them and to solve them over time. Still, Rosenberg says wars can happen suddenly. The place is a, is a tinderbox. One spark, the whole thing can go up in flames. So it's hard to say. Uh, one thing we know prophetically is that Ezekiel 38 and 39, the, the war of Gog and Magog, comes after a period of security for the Israeli people and prosperity. Now, you'd have to say that right now Israel is experiencing both. Rosenberg says Israelis are feeling more secure than any time in their 63-year history. In fact, they're feeling more secure as Jews here than any time in the last 2,000 years. But the greatest risk for Israel right now is that Israel isn't focused on the Lord. That, Rosenberg says, is crucial, so the Lord can help Israel deal with the challenging times ahead. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thanks, Chris. I showed you about it earlier this week. I think it's key. You look at Zechariah. The nations are going to come against Israel. It, there's no question the Bible says it's going to happen. and. Uh, uh, Ezekiel 38 lays out a, a coalition of Russia, Iran, uh, Turkey, uh, probably the Sudan, which is a Muslim uh, area, uh, North Sudan. It's all in there, and it's going to happen, and uh, it's just a question of how soon. Terry? Well, one key clue in reading the signs of the times is understanding the role of Israel in relation to the last days. But what will actually happen once the end arrives? Pat talks about the tribulation, the rapture, and the second coming of Christ in this segment on the signs of the times. Let's watch. People are asking, how will it end? When will it end? What are the signs of the times? Does the Bible give us any indication of what might be happening. I want to show you again, I, I like these timelines. This now is just a short period we're talking about here, and at best, seven years. And uh, the, so the question is, Jesus Christ is going to come back again at some point. So he, this is the second coming. We call it the blessed hope of the church, the return of the Lord. And the Bible says 
that when he comes back, he will take his own people to be with him. Now, that is called the rapture, and that comes from a word rapio, which means I snatch the catching up. Now, Jesus said that before he comes back again, it's going to be like the days of Noah. Before they entered into the ark, people were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage before the flood came and destroyed them all. He said it'll be like it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were eating, they were drinking, they were planting, they were building until the fire came from heaven and destroyed them. He said that's the way it's going to be. It will happen suddenly. It will happen unexpectedly. And yet Paul says this day won't catch you unawares. Now the big debate has been on uh, this thing up, up here is called the tribulation. And the question is, when does the Lord come back? Does he come back before then? Does he come back after then? Does he come back in the middle of it? Well, uh, I'm sure I will get everybody mad when I give you my point of view, but I think it's what the Bible has to say. And I want to stick with the Bible. So let's see what Jesus said, all right? In Matthew 24, he says, there will be great distress unequal from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equal again. Now, look at this. I want you to look very carefully. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. You see that? This will be something that's going to wipe out the whole human race. And if it, those days had not been cut short, now, what will do that? What will do that? Will an earthquake do it? Not on your life. A flood, tsunami, no way. There's only one thing I know of that will do that, and that's an asteroid hit to the world. And that's what the Bible says in the eighth chapter of Revelation. It says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having what looked like a flaming mountain, and he cast it into the sea. And Jesus said, if it weren't for the elect, his people, his people, there would be no flesh left on earth. Now, that's what he says. He says it's going to be so horrible. And you read this, and you've got to realize, how is it going to end? It isn't too pleasant. That's what he says. I want to show you again. These are from Matthew 24. The great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equal again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But look what he says, and this is very important. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Well, who are the elect? Well, the elect are the ones who, who love him. They're, they're his people, the chosen from out of the earth. I'm one of the elect. If you know Jesus, you're one of the elect. And those days will be shortened. But it doesn't say anything about they'll be taken out of the world. It just says the days will be shortened because of them. So all of that, all flesh would die. Now, look at that. If anyone says, look, here's the Messiah, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform uh, many miracles. But don't believe it. Great signs and wonders, if possible, to deceive the elect. So if anyone tells you there he is out there, don't go out. He's in the inner room. Do not believe them. For as the lightning that comes from the east is visible even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Now, that doesn't sound like some secret slipping away. Now, there are people who have been teaching, and it's erroneous. And I know a lot of you in this audience will think I'm stepping on you, but I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. You've got to destroy the Bible if you're going to go into some of this other stuff. And people say, well, before there's a tribulation, Jesus is going to come back. He's going to take his own in a rapture. And then he's going to come back seven years later or three and a half years later. doesn't say that. 
He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds. That's what it, it says. He's going to gather his elect from the four winds. Now, that's the rapture, and that is going to take place. That's going to take place at his coming. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ is what we've been looking for, and that's called the blessed hope of the church. He's not going to come three times. He's going to come once in suffering. He's going to come back again in triumph, and that's when we'll be caught up to be with the Lord in the, in the air. Now, he also says uh, in Matthew 24, if you read it carefully, immediately after the tribulation of those days, then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Immediately after, immediately after, read what it says, immediately after tribulation. What it says. And they say, well, you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Yes, I do. I divide it right exactly like it's written. Immediately after the tribulation, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then he shall send out his angels. Then they shall gather the elect from the four corners of the earth. And there's another scripture, Matthew 13. As the weeds are pulled up or the tares and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And they will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let him hear. This is the Bible. This is what it says. And so at the end of the age, that's what's going to happen. It's not going to be some secret thing. It's going to be something that's going to be trumpeted. And the angels will come out, and Jesus will say to his anointed, Come, blessed are your Father. Enter into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But we'll continue to bring you more segments on the signs of the times throughout the week. If you'd like to watch any of the previous segments or share them with your friends, all you have to do is log on to CBN.com. Plus, you can get an expanded version of all of this week's teaching on biblical prophecy. We've compiled them for you into one DVD called Signs of the Times, How Will It All End? And that DVD will be available in September. But when we come back, we're going to take your questions from our chat room. Ben says, if the rapture happens after the seven-year tribulation, how will we know when the tribulation begins? We'll bring it on with that question about the end times and more next. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said, it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried. And I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan and the next morning the results were read to you. We'd go up there, I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. I saw you on TV. I gotta say, it was painful to watch. Try living it. Spend seven days in utopia. Wow. You'll find your game. First, you have to see it. Feel it. Trust it. Reminds me of someone else I used to know. That he does. I think sometime here might do you good. Sure is beautiful. I don't think that your coming here was an accident. Seven Days in Utopia. Rated G. Well, we want to 
want to take some of your questions for Pat. Pat, this is from Ben, who says, if the rapture happens after the seven-year tribulation, how do we know when the tribulation begins? How would you know if an earthquake just hit? <laughs> It'll be that <laughs> significant. If, a, if an asteroid hits the Earth, trust me, you'll know. Uh, the sun will be darkened. The moon won't give its light. Uh, people will be dying of starvation. It'll be hideous. You'll know if stuff like this happens. I mean, you know. Be very evident. So uh, the thing I want to stress with people is not to spend time on, on, on the times and the seasons, but to say, how do we occupy till Jesus comes back again? That's the answer. Mm -hmm. We work as hard as I can to uh, lead people to the Lord. All right, next question. Yeah, this is Leah who says, during the end times, what about the temple in Israel that's supposed to be built? When does that come in with all these things that are happening? Well. I wrote a book called The End of the Age. It had all this uh, figured out, and it's, it's in there that, that somewhere <clears throat> after this uh, asteroid hits, in my book, the Earth is in chaos, and it was then time for a dictator to arise and take over. And that's supposedly the temple would be rebuilt, and he would proclaim that he's God. I mean, that would, so it could happen during that period of time. Uh, an antichrist could come forth. Uh, but again, you read Revelation, and I want to cautious people about Revelation. It, it, it is a symbolic book, and it may well be talking about the Roman Empire, and it may also be talking about the fall of Jerusalem and the Jews, and is focused on Israel and Rome. And Sometimes it all is mixed together. It's mixed in there. together, but something. it doesn't necessarily say Washington or New York. So I mean, I, I just when you read it, keep in mind that's the kind of book it is, and. Uh, uh, it, it is a type of, they call it apocryphal literature about things like this. So, uh, I, you know, it's there, but it's in types and shadows. I, what I like is the clear stuff in the gospel where Jesus said, this is what's going to happen. And that's yes. what I, my teaching is about. All right, what's next? This is Helen who says, can you explain what New Jerusalem is? Well, uh, the idea is that... Uh, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and new Jerusalem is going to come down out of heaven like a bride adorned for her, her, her husband. Re read the last few chapters of, of Revelation, and the idea is that this is the holy city, New Jerusalem, where God dwells, where you don't need the light of the sun because the light of the Lord is going to uh, illuminate it, and where the nations of the earth will walk in the joy of the Lord. And I mean, that's what, it's, it's what it is. R read, by, read, read Revelation, the last few chapters. Well, Bob says, I've been watching your series on the end times, and it sounds like you believe in dominion theology. Are you a dominionist, or do you believe Jesus is bringing in the kingdom? What in heaven's name is a dominionist? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 whatever it is, I don't think I'm one of them. <laughs> I think you'd know if you were, perhaps. Well, the Bible says if you read carefully, the Bible tells mankind that you will have dominion. Let them have dominion over the earth over the fish of the sea, the fires of the God gave mankind the rule over the earth. But of course Jesus is the Lord. He has the rule, and then the Bible says that the end time, after he's put everything under his feet, then he's going to turn it over to God the Father. That's what Paul said. So, so what do you think dominionist is, is a, a belief no that we bring in the end times by our actions or something? Uh, no way. Interesting. Uh, nor have I ever said anything that would no. give that uh, no. person that no. idea. What? This is Chris who says, according to Matthew 24, 14, the end will come when the gospel is preached in all the world. As the head of the largest Christian broadcasting network, do you know of any places on earth that haven't heard the gospel? If there are, there are tiny little tribes off in the jungles of the Amazon or someplace like that. They're Satellite very few. Satellite dishes really changed that, oh, didn't they? Oh, dear me, yeah. yes. I mean, for example, the Kabil Berber, they were left uh, sort of unattended, and we've been broadcasting to the Kabil Berber in their language. So there are few, if any, regions of the earth that haven't been. But, I, you know, the New Tribes mission goes out to bring languages and translations to tiny little groups like Papua, New Guinea, and places like that. So uh, there may be a few, but precious few, on the earth that haven't heard the gospel. Mark says, what are your theories on the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, or the Club of Rome? Is there some truth that they will have something to do with the New World Order? Well, uh, this Illuminati uh, was, you know, during the time of the French Revolution, uh, there were people who had been affected by Egyptian mythology, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, were sort of a secret society. 
And they used the term, the New World Order. I wrote a book, The New World Order, which is a big bestseller. And after that time, President George Bush was talking about the New World Order. After my book, he stopped talking about it. Because <clears throat> this was a key phrase for uh, these uh, satanic groups yes. like uh, the, the Illuminati. Uh, but uh, again, we can get so hung up on looking for uh, spooks and spies and, and evil plots that I think we'll get carried away. I laid it all out in my book, The New World Order. But uh, I, I, again, I'm looking to Jesus. And I think our, our total focus, our total focus as Christians ought to be getting the gospel out before the Lord comes back. And if he comes back a thousand years from now, we'll be doing our job. Occupy till I come. All right. This is Mari or Mary who says, at the end of the times, the devil will be released from his chains and stir up trouble. Why would God allow that? You know, I really don't know. I mean, you've got a thousand years of peace mm -hmm. uh, under the benevolent leadership of Jesus Christ, where people are living in bliss and joy, but they were doing that in the Garden of Eden. And yet God allowed Satan to come into the Garden of Eden and tempt Adam and Eve away from him. So it just shows how gullible people are, and he's going to give them one last chance to say no to Satan. But at that time, uh, Satan will be seized by the angels. He will be bound by a chain, put in the lake of fire, where he will be tormented forever and ever and ever. That's what the Bible says. But that, that, that's revelation. And again, it's a book of shadows. Just keep in mind, it, 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 it's not as clear in the Gospels and in the letters of Paul as it is here in Revelation. Right. This is an interesting one. Sherry says, I am a hairstylist. I believe one of the signs of in the end times is family against family. And I see that in my clients. It's painful. Do I pray for this strife to end or for it to continue since it is his will? Heavens no. Blessed are the peacemakers. Do everything you yeah. can to bring peace in families. But that's exactly what the Bible says. A man will be set against his uh, uh, wife, his children, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. I mean, it, it'll a happen. A betrayal, sort of. A, yeah, a mm -hmm. betrayal. But it was encouraged by the Nazis, encouraged by the communists. And yes, we, we see it in our society, but it's, it's the flesh wants its way, and it, it rebels against any kind of authority. But do everything you can to bring peace, all right? Here's another interesting one. Pat MC says, with the end times nearing and so much persecution and devastation to come, is it wrong for Christians to bring children into this world? You know, about 50 years ago, I thought the same thing as my wife and I were expecting the birth of our fourth child. And I thought, how can I bring this child into the world as evil as it is? Well, my dear daughter has grown up. She has three lovely children. Uh, she's a, a, a prayer warrior and a wonderful Christian. And she survived. So uh, the Lord was with me, with her, with, and will be with you and your children. So don't stop your activities to yes. say, well, I, I'm not going to have kids because of you never know what time and the times and the, and the, and the seasons. They're, they're reserved for the Father. So the big thing he tells us to do is occupy till I come. Don't be spending your time speculating. Don't speculate on all this stuff. Uh, you know, old wives' tales, et cetera, et cetera. But let's focus in on the most important thing, which is living for Jesus, living according to his uh, word, living in love with each other, and taking the gospel to the world. All right? Well, that's all the time we have for your questions today. It's obvious many of you have an interest in this, and so we encourage you to go to CBN.com if you'd like to see the other features this week, and we'll have more tomorrow. Well, still ahead, a woman and her son face a killer tornado in a fast food restaurant. The clouds started to rotate back. The lights went out. And then there was a sound. It sounded like a cannon. See what happens next on today's 700 Club. Dear Bowflex, I dropped eight dress sizes, 36 pounds, and all I had to do was walk. This is the Bowflex Tread Climber Machine, the easiest way to walk and burn up to twice the calories in less time. By combining the motion of a treadmill, a stepper, and an elliptical, you get the calorie burning benefits of all three workouts at once. I lost 30 pounds in four months. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Call now for your free DVD and information kit. You'll see how the Tread Climber burns up to twice the calories of a treadmill. 
Plus, you'll learn how you can own a Tread Climber machine today with special financing for 18 months. Within the first couple of weeks, I started to lose inches. I lost 50 pounds in three months using the Tread Climber. Call or go online to buytc.com for your free info kit. We'll also send you the Bowflex Insider's Guide with a personal fitness assessment to help you jumpstart your Bowflex body today, absolutely free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bowflex. Sincerely, J.D. Weber. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. Welcome to Washington for the CBN News Break. A former UN inspector says Libya has enough nuclear material to make what's called a dirty bomb that can spread radiation. Libya gave up its program to build weapons of mass destruction eight years ago, but the country still has stocks of some nuclear supplies. According to Reuters, the former UN weapons inspector says what's left of those supplies could be used to make a weapon, or it could be used for a weapon if it ends up in the wrong hands, rather. A Mississippi school district has halted public prayers before football games. DeSoto County school officials made that call after complaints from the Freedom From Religion Foundation. The Memphis Commercial Appeal newspaper says the foundation warned school officials in DeSoto that recent Supreme Court decisions prohibit school-sponsored prayer. The Wisconsin-based group says it's dedicated to advancing separation of church and state. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Tomorrow. We conclude the Signs of the Time series with a look at the Antichrist. There is such a thing as evil, in my judgment, and this man is evil. Plus, believers were killed for this. From ancient Pergamum to modern Germany, the seat of Satan redesigned by the Nazis. Satan felt at home there. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. John Mapes is 42. Mortgage, married, two great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. John can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $25 a month. His secret? Select Quote. Select Quote is impartial. They'll search the pick of insurers like these to give you a choice of your best prices. Select Quote has great savings on term life for women, too. John's wife, Carrie, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. Select Quote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or visit SelectQuote.com. It's incredible to see what God's faithfulness and your partnership has accomplished through CBN over the past five decades. What began as just a tiny signal that reached to the corner has grown into a broadcasting giant reaching over 100 countries in more than 60 languages. That's why we're having a very special 50 years of broadcasting celebration here in Virginia Beach the weekend of October 1st and we want you to be a part of it. The All Day Festival includes live entertainment from Mercy Me, Diamond Rio, and the Annie Moses Band. There will be hot air balloon rides, the petting zoo, Irish dancers, an antique car show, hay rides, and a whole lot more. You can go to CBN.com today to find out more about the event and register to be part of this once-in-a-lifetime jubilee. We look forward to having you here with us as we praise the Lord for all He's done. God bless you. 
On Saturday, October 1st, we are having a special celebration coming up for CBN's 50th broadcast <sighs> anniversary. And we want to invite you to join us. It's going to be awesome. Pat Williams of the Orlando Magic will be with us, along with evangelist Reinhard Bonnke and some terrific music guests, including Mercy Me, Diamond Rio, and the Annie Moses Band. And it's a free all-day event, topped off by magnificent fireworks. So just go to cbn.com 50 to find out more and to find out how you can be here and join with us. That's Saturday, October 1st, right here on the grounds of CBN. It's going to be Fun. quite the day. Well, heavy rains and a mudslide wrecked havoc on the adobe home of a single mom in Guatemala. It also interfered with the small businesses she and her husband and her children are in. But take a look at what happened in her life. Daniel and his younger brother and sister have become experts at peeling and slicing plankton, a type of banana. They do it to help their mom with her small business. Alicia is a single mom and has been raising the children alone for the past eight years. She sells the fried bananas at the bus terminal. That income barely covers their living expenses. Daniel is the oldest. He watches the kids at home for his mom while she's at work. Sometimes my friends ask me to play football, but I told them I couldn't because I was afraid to leave the little ones alone. Then disaster struck. A mudslide collapsed one of the walls at Alicia's house. Right after we got a lot of rain, one wall got really wet. It literally melted and fell down on the beds. Operation Blessing quickly responded to the crisis and hired a local builder to repair the damaged wall. For the first time in a long time, Alicia and the kids are feeling more secure. Then we gave Alicia a grant to help her expand her small business. That means she'll have to spend less time at the bus terminal and will have more time to spend with her children. I do not have anything to give to thank you, but I know God never forgets us. God never forgets us. We have so much here in this land. I know there are people out of work and there are people who are struggling here in America, but basically, as Americans, we live a very good life compared to any place else in the world. The poorest among us are wealthy compared to some of the poverty-stricken people in the Philippines or in Guatemala or some other place, and certainly over in, in the Horn of Africa. We have been blessed. And the best way that we can continue the blessing is to say to God, I am grateful, and I'm so grateful I want to help others. This, the idea is that God has blessed you, so you help others. And as you help others, God will say, well, all right, your blessing, I will bless you. That's the whole concept of Operation Blessing. So if you want to participate, we ask you to join the 700 Club or make a special contribution to Operation Blessing or the CBN. And um, we would just love to receive that, and I know God will bless you richly. The telephone number is there, 1-800-759-0700, or it's uh, CBN.com. And Terry, before we, we go on, I've got a, a, a special announcement. Can I make a special announcement? You certainly may. I certainly may. It's your show. <laughs> we have a very, very valuable member of our staff. He's a man that's been with CBN for years. He is tried, true, trustworthy, and wonderful. But like it happens to people, he's decided to retire and go to Texas oh, and, I know who you mean, yes. and live on a... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything in Texas is Enjoy a ranch. His family. It's like <laughs> 10 acres and it's a ranch. Well, whatever. I don't know. Maybe he's got 50 acres. He's got some horses. He's, he's going to be, be with his grandchildren. We have a position open at CBN for the chief financial officer. We need somebody who has uh, hopefully CPA experience, who has broad experience in, in real estate, bank relations, uh, financial. Because we work all over the world, and it's a very exciting job. So if some of you are looking for something that's really a challenge and really going to be great, and you love Jesus, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you have the skills that we're looking for, please notify us. And you can just call or write or ask for the personnel department, and uh, we'd be glad to hear from you. CBN.com, or you can, uh, wherever they, 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 but the personnel department will, will process it. Uh, but, uh, this is going to be a tough one to fill. And so I'm, I want the best in the world. You may be in India, China, wherever you are, if, if you've got skills <laughs> in these, these areas. That's right. That's okay. right. We're looking for 
for spirit-filled genius. A big job. Spirit-filled genius. But he's, he's a tough one to, to, to fill. I will miss him. But that happens, and people go on, and yes. uh, he goes with our blessing. All right. Well, up next, a mother and son survive a monster storm armed with the power of prayer. Plus, we're going to be praying for you and your needs. So stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Our world moves at an incredible pace. People everywhere rushing to their destinations. But there's a destiny that awaits each one of us. And all of us will face life's ultimate question. Where will I spend eternity? In his new DVD, Life Beyond the Grave, Pat Robertson introduces you to real people with remarkable stories of heaven and riveting accounts of hell. You'll learn what the Bible has to say about life after death. The Bible tells us that eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor mind conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. Life Beyond the Grave will build your faith as God's promises come alive, prepare you to face your eternity, and provide you with a powerful witnessing tool to share with your loved ones. I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your destiny is sealed forever in heaven. Come on and cross over to the all-new Cross Country Radio from CBN.com. Cross Country, where country meets the cross. You'll hear real Christian country from great country artists. The all-new Cross Country Radio, where country meets the cross. Cross Country, it's only on CBN.com. Well, one minute, Tara Mitchell and her son were stopping for a burger at a Wendy's restaurant. Next, they were facing a monster tornado, one of the worst in the history of Mississippi. Here's what happened. Tara Mitchell is a retired school teacher from Clinton, Mississippi, who always thought she had a good grasp on science and weather patterns. So it seemed almost routine when she and her son, Max, stopped at a Wendy's fast food restaurant in Yazoo City to wait out what they thought was just another storm. And we were looking out the windows and um, just noticed that the rain stopped um, and it was really, it got really dark. And we were looking at the clouds and we just started to notice that the, the clouds started to rotate back. I mean, it's like the wind was blowing them past, but then they started to come back. So Tara, Mac, and all the other restaurant employees and guests made their way to the restroom to take shelter. And as soon as we closed the door, the lights went out. And then there was a sound. It sounded like a cannon. The next thing that happened was that the ground started to shake like an earthquake. And in my mind, you know, my teacher mind, I'm thinking, this is not supposed to happen. I'm supposed to hear a roaring. I'm supposed to feel wind or pressure. This is like an earthquake. By now, people were crying and trying to call out to their friends and family. And I just thought, what can I do? Um, there's going to be something I can do. And so I just thought, pray and just thank God for what he hasn't done yet. I just began to thank him for uh, his protection, that he created the storm, and that God was in control of the storm. And, you know, if it was his will, it could pass. I knew he promised in his word that it was not his will, it was not God's will, that anyone should perish. So to just give them a chance to call upon the Lord. And it was over right after I said that. Tara stepped out of the restroom first. The brick wall with the glass windows to the right of the restaurant, it was totally gone. All of the windows were gone. Chairs and tables, some of them were missing. Uh, the counter where you stand and place your order was not even in the restaurant. Um, the ceiling tiles in the restaurant, were it, the ones that were not missing were hanging so that you could see the sky. And there was glass everywhere. Weather officials later reported that the tornado on April 24, 2010, was on the ground for 149 miles. It lasted nearly three hours and reached a maximum width of 1.75 miles. It reminds you of Katrina. And of course, that was Governor Haley Barber. 
there are now official fatalities uh, from this storm. A lot of people uh, unaccounted for right now. But the tornado had not harmed a single person at Wendy's. When I turned and looked back through the door into the restroom, the restroom was perfect. There were no ceiling tiles out of place. Uh, there were no cracks in the wall. The door was still on the hinges and opened and closed fine. There's no way anybody could survive this. There's no way you could just walk away without even a scratch, and we did. I mean, that's our God. I mean, He just makes a way where you think none is possible. And no matter what situation you're in, you know, He hears you, He sees you, and He's standing there ready. He's standing there ready to cup you in His hands, just like He did all of us. Some of you right now are in the storm track of uh, Iris that is coming up the uh, East Coast. Uh, God is able. He's able to deter a hurricane. He's able to send a hurricane out into the ocean. He's able to, you know, take care of you. So we want to pray for people. And uh, Terry's got a report to read for us. Then we want to pray for your needs and what may be coming up. This is Addie. She lives in Danville, Alabama. She was having difficulty taking deep breaths, so her doctor ordered chest x-rays. And the x-ray showed a nodule on each of her lungs, so he set up an appointment for her with a lung specialist. Then Addie went home. She was watching a video of the 700 Club that she'd recorded while she was in the doctor's yeah. office. And Pat, she heard you say there's somebody who has a lesion on their lungs. It's not tuberculosis, but it's serious. The doctors are not going to know what to do with you. Put your hand on your chest wherever that thing is. In the name of Jesus, receive healing. So Addie did what you said, and when she kept the appointment with the specialist, he ordered a CT scan. The report read, no pulmonary mass or nodule evidence. She was told he could not detect anything abnormal with her lungs, and she is now breathing normally. That's God. Mm -hmm. We're going to join hands. Pray with us. It's those of you, especially all over the East Coast, Father, you have still storms. You have sent storms into the ocean. You have turn them away from land. You have done miracles for your people, and we pray. And we ask for your protection. We ask that you would cover us, Lord, with a mantle of your love and your power. And this great storm, send it, Lord, out to the east, into the ocean, and spare your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, do miracles. And for those in this audience that are looking for prayer, touch them, each one. Touch them by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, that's all the time we've got. Remember, tomorrow uh, we're going to be looking at a program that Gordon did called The Seat of Satan. He, he, he went uh, to Pergamum, then he went over to, to Germany and showed what happened. And they're going to talk a little bit about the Antichrist. Um, that's, that's his deal. And, You'll find it interesting. Well, the signs of the times are going to continue then. And today we leave you with these words from Revelation 22, 20. Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Remember, phones are available if you need prayer. You can watch these uh, stories on our internet site, cbn.com. We've got some expansion on what we've been talking about, about prophecy. And remember tomorrow, the seat of Satan. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. Chen Chu couldn't hear or speak. His parents were too poor to afford the speech therapy he needed. His mother prayed that God would help her little boy. That's when you were the answer to her prayers and provided Chen Chu with the therapy he needed. You took him out of a silent prison and gave him hope for the future. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.